Now the fun continues with Jonah 1, 5a, just the first part of the verse. It's going to really start getting fun because we're going to learn four things in this video and they're all really simple. So go ahead, first of all, see if you can pronounce that first line. Go ahead and give it a shot. Pause the video. Okay, here's how I pronounce it. va ye ra u va ye ra u Try this one. ha ma la kim ha ma la kim And then this one is va yiz a ku va yiz a ku And then ish Ish is a good vocabulary word to learn in this lesson. It means a person or a man. I am an Ish. Um, it can be a little bit uh, generic, I think, but Isha is woman, so Ish is man, t generally. And then we have El, Elohiv. Now, Elohiv, does that look familiar? It, you know Elohim, perhaps. This is Elohiv. The difference between Elohim, God, and Elohiv is his God. We're not going to memorize it, but if you have an infinite brain space, the Vav on the end here is his, his God. Elohim is God, and then the Vav is his God. You don't need to know that in this video, uh, but I'll introduce you to a lot of things before I want you to nail them down and actually know them. So what's the translation of this line? Uh, uh, Vayira'u is and they uh, they feared um and they feared who feared subject tip, verb in a typical ver, uh hebrew sentence the verb comes first and then the subject the sailors feared and the sailors feared and what did they do when they feared and they cried who cried a, a man to his god cried um int interesting this is plural they cried uh, but and this is singular each it's it's a the way Hebrew does it. It's a bit idiomatic here. Each cried because there's more than one each, right? Each cried to his God. All right. So what is the grammar? What look at this and see? You've learned some grammar already. We learned three things uh, in the previous video in verse four. We learned how to say and. We learned how to say uh, the. Um, and so, um, do you see any of the things you learned in the previous video in this line? Yes, you do. You see, for example, the vav. The vav on the front means and. See, and they feared. And then on uh, vayizat ku, and they cried. So the vav on the front of a word, just go ahead and, and think it always means and, okay? And they feared, and they cried. We'll learn about how where the they comes from. We'll learn in a later video. We don't, you don't need to know that. It's the ooh on the end, but you don't. And what's well, the? It's the yod on the front and the ooh on the end is where the they comes from. You do not need to know that. La la la. I'm not listening. But what you do need to know is the and. And they feared, and they cried. What else? How about the? Remember the form of the is hey patak doubling. So we have a perfectly normal the here. The sailors. Hey, patak doubling. So malakim uh, is sailors. And so we were reviewing what we learned in the last lesson, lesson and that is how do you say uh, the. And the normal way to say the is hey, patak doubling. And now uh, for something new. The im here, hirik yod mem. Hirik yod is a, a mother of reading. It's a piggyback on the yod. It's a long I. Um, the im ending is a what we call a masculine plural ending. Now, as English speakers, we get plural, right? There's one ken, you know, there's two kens, you know, could be um, one thing, mo more than one thing, singular, plural. We get that. That's easy. We don't have what's called gender, however, in English. So we don't have masculine words and feminine words. It's just English doesn't do it. But maybe you've learned Spanish um, and, and Spanish has masculine and feminine. Um, and other languages have masculine and fr feminine. French has masculine and feminine. You have to use a different, you know, you have to use a la mère, the mother, and uh, le père, the father. It's a different, slightly different word, similar, but slightly different word for uh, the in French if you're talking about a, a female thing or a feminine uh, noun, and a slightly different word for the if you're talking about a masculine uh, word. 
That's something English doesn't do. You might be thinking, what? Why would they do that? That's just stupid. <laughs> Ours is not to question why. Ours is just to memorize or die. And Hebrew has two genders. It has masculine words and it has feminine words. And this doesn't really mean anything. It's not like, oh, they think that such and such is a woman. You know, they they thought the earth, how stupid those people were. They thought the earth was literally a, a woman. No, that would be actually a stupid comment. Um, gender is, does not map neatly to sex uh, in uh, these sorts of languages. Um, it's just a kind of a, a, a convention. It's a fun little game they play. You know, when you learn a new game, you memorize the rules. Do the rules make sense? They may not. It's a game. Um, think of gender a bit as a, a game that some languages play and Hebrew plays it. So this is not just a, not just a plural ending. Uh, uh, ha malakim, the sailors, with an S on the end. We put an S on the end. They put an im on the end. And that's a masculine plural ending. We'll learn the feminine's endings uh, soon enough, but not in this video. So we now know uh, a new thing here, the masculine plural ending im. This is really a, a matter of vocabulary, but another thing I want you to know uh, from this particular uh, uh, verse is el. This is not el the god. Uh, because Elo Elohim can be shortened to Ale and mean God. That's not what, the, and that's with a Sere. Um, El is with a Segol, um, and it's a preposition. It means to. So we've learned the preposition to, another vocabulary form, uh, to his God. All right, so two new things, one of which is just vocabulary. Uh, ish, I could have put it as another vocabulary, man. Um, but you're on your way, right? Two new things. The real big new thing in this in this particular slide is the masculine plural ending, E. All right, well, let's do the next part of the verse. Again, pause the video, see if you can pronounce it. Here's how I would pronounce it. Vayatilu et ha kelim asher ba'aniya el hayam. Some words that you've seen uh, in previous verses there. Uh, this one you've actually seen, although you saw it in a in a simplified form. This is or a different form, that is. And they threw. So God threw wind um, at the, the boat, and here uh, the sailors are throwing stuff, the cargo, the vessels. They're throwing it overboard. And they threw et ha kelim, uh, the vessels, the cargo, that uh, in the boat. Okay, so Here's some stuff you've seen before. You've seen ba before. You've seen aniya. It means boat, not a big important vocabulary word. But you've seen those before. Hold on to that thought. And then uh, two. We learned two in the previous uh, video, a previous uh, slide. And then you've seen hayam before. What is it? What is it? What is it? Well, things that you should know. Pause and look at those words. And what should you already know from those words? And here's what you should already know. You should know the vav. What's the vav? It's and. You should already know that. Um, you should know the. Hey, patak, doubling. There's the. And here's another the. Hey, patak, doubling. So it's the vessels and it's the sea. In both cases, the is hey, patak, doubling. Right? You should know that. Um, there's the masculine plural ending, again, that we learned on the previous video. Where is it? See if you can find it. Here it is, here it yod mem. So it's not just one box. I don't know what kind of cargo it was. Maybe, I don't know how they stored it. Um, so it's not just one vessel. It's not just one bit of cargo, but they're throwing lots of cargo overboard. The vessels, uh, they threw the vessels overboard. Here it yod mem is a masculine plural ending. Now, prepositions you should now know. From the previous slide, you learned L, which means two. To, into the sea. Um, so L is something you should know. And B, do you remember B from the uh, previous verse uh, that we looked at? It means in, right? So aniya is the word for boat, and then B means in, in the boat. Ah, two more uh, new things. Oh, did I not put the the there? Yes, two more new things. Um, this is the verse again. So this is not a new verse. It's the same one. And they threw the vessels that were in the boat uh, to the sea. We already we already saw that. But I want to want to point out two new things. The first is it's actually not new because I mentioned it 
in the previous verse, but now I want you to remember it, okay? That's what we'll do. We'll introduce things, and eventually I'll say, and now you need to have it memorized. So there is a the here within the boat. Do you remember? We know in, ba, and we know aniya, boat. So where is the the? Well, if you remember that when prepositions are squished onto words uh, that have the on them, the hay pops out like a pimple. Uh, the hay goes away. And so you've got the in and you've got the boat. Where's the the? This is all that's left of it. This kamatz is all that's left. If it was in a boat, it would be ba with a shiva, ba aniya. But this is ba aniya. And the kamatz is all that's left of the word the. I said this in the previous video, but now let's, let's, let's hold you accountable for it. When you have a guttural, so there are certain gutturals. Um, the four guttural consonants are aleph, ayin, he, and chet. Two of them, aleph and uh, ayin, they do, none of them do doubling. So the gutturals are like, we're not going to do doubling. We don't do doubling. It's not in our contract. You can't make us do doubling. So you can't, the hey patak doubling doesn't happen with, with uh, gutturals. Ayan and Aleph in particular, um, instead of just leaving the patak, they do something called compensatory lengthening. So the, what was a, it used to be hey patak doubling, like here, hey patak doubling. Well, the Aleph here said, I'm not going to do doubling. They tried to shoot a dagesh into it, and it bounced back, ricocheted, and made the patak into a kamatz. Not really. Um, uh, there's a kamatz. So it, it lengthens. So it says, well, I can't double the olive, so I guess I'll just lengthen the patak. But the hay has been squeezed out by the preposition. Now, don't worry if this is like, what is he talking about? Because we'll see this over and over again, and eventually it'll stick. One time it'll stick. On the seventh time it'll stick. Maybe it's stuck, stuck this time. So that, that kamatz there is uh, telling us that the, it's in the boat. And all the only thing that tells it is, tells us it's the is the fact that that's a kamatz and not a patak um, and not a shiva. So this is the. Uh, gutturals don't do doubling. And so the is length, the patak is lengthened to a kamatz in that case. And if you remember from the previous uh, verse, when there's a preposition on the word, the hay goes away. Um, so that's that's probably the most complicated thing in this video to try to get. Final thing is I want to tell you about this word et. Um, et is what's called the direct object marker. I don't know if you remember from grammar, uh, but in a sentence like Ken hit the ball, uh, the direct object is Ken hit what? He hit the ball. The ball is the object of hitting. Um, and so the direct object is whatever follows the verb that receives the action of the verb. In this case, they threw what? They threw the cargo. They threw the vessels. Et, uh, et isn't translated, believe it or not. Um, that might be weird to you, to have a word that you don't translate. Um, et basically says direct object approaching. Uh, and it also indicates it's going to be a the direct object. And, and in fact, we knew it was a the vessels because hey, patak doubling, it has a the on it. So you'll know it's a the because it'll have a the on it. But the, the et basically says, the word that follows me is the direct object. So they threw what? They threw uh, the vessels. And so it's a little help. Uh, you probably don't need it. I'm, to be honest, you probably won't even need it uh, to translate it correctly. It's, you'll probably ignore it. Um, it can be in two different forms. When, when the makaif is there, um, it is treated as like one word with what follows. The sound is treated as like a unit. And so when that happens, you lose a little breath. You lose a little because you gotta, you got to have enough breath. you got to save your breath to get to the end of this thing. And so the vowel tends to, when you have a makaif, the vowel tends to diminish or reduce is the word that you use. It reduces. So when the makaif joins the et uh, to the following word, it'll be et. When there's no makaif and you can say it in its own right, it'll be eight uh, with a sere, uh, a two dot uh, eight. Um, so, what do you need to know from this video? There are four things that I want you to know uh, from this video. Um, well, actually, here's the last thing I want you to know, and that's this word, asher. Asher is the relative pronoun. Now, you may not know what a relative pronoun is in English, but you use it all the time. Uh, it is the word that or which when it connects. So, if I say, I am the one that is making this video, that is the relative pronoun. Or this is the book that I was telling you about. Or this is 
uh, we used to say, uh, this is the thing which, uh, you know, I am the God who heals you. Uh, this is the thing that uh, which we were talking about. Um, we don't use which as much in English anymore. That tends to do it uh, most of the time. But you can see it's it's relating something. I am the guy that is making the video. That's a relative pronoun. You don't need to really know the grammar to translate it correctly. Just translate it that or which when you get to it or who and everything will be just fine. So four things in this video. Uh, some vocabulary like el and uh, ish and asher. So some vocabulary. The definite direct object marker. Um, that's uh, direct object approaching. And it's going to be a the direct object. That's a new thing. And then this, the most hardest thing in this video, is that when the word the uh, comes before uh, an ayin or an aleph, uh, it doesn't do doubling. It doesn't do hey patak doubling. What happens is we get a compensatory lengthening of the patak into a kamatz. And that kamatz is the only thing in this particular case um, to indicate that there's a the there. Now, if it wasn't in the boat, if it was just the boat, then it would be hey kamatz aniya, uh, ha aniya, if it was just the boat. But in the boat, the ba squeezes the hey out like a pimple, and you're left with ba aniya. Well, this has been uh, Jonah 1 5, the first part of the verse.